What did you make of the supernatural aspects that we heard of uh, in, in his story saying, I can't explain some of the stuff that happened while we were there. Speaking of when they were staying with Jody together, plates flying off the shelves in the kitchen at full speed, smashing against the wall, still hearing crashing sounds from the basement while we were upstairs. Uh, and then Kevin uh, and Ruby enlisting the aid of a bishop to help them cast demons out uh, in and around Jody or evil spirits. Okay, I people have their versions of exorcism and, and all that, so I get, like, maybe you have blessings or exorcism, whatever you're going to do to somebody. But to believe that the plates are flying off the wall and you're, I mean, right. what the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I, I found that absolutely fascinating and, frankly, a bit entertaining. And you know what it spoke to me of? Have you ever, well, maybe when you were a kid, we certainly had slumber parties when I was a kid, and everybody told ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. And or, or kids, you know, teenagers get together and watch horror movies together. And this creates um, a, a cognitive bias where people will then, after after an incident like this, the horror movies or the ghost stories, they start to misperceive neutral stimuli as something threatening. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a kid in the movie, The Exorcist came out. All of a sudden, everybody was so impacted by that movie. Every, everybody thought they saw someone demon possessed everywhere. Yep, yep. And so we're all influenced by these things. And in this cult of the Jody cult, there was such a paranoid emphasis on Satan. They all talked about Satan all the time. And I think because they had this in-group and they had this belief system, which was really bizarre and distorted, that created a mindset where once they were thinking that way, that Satan is out to get us and our kids are possessed and all this weird stuff, they were thinking emotionally, not rationally, and then misperceived, oh, there's a noise, you know, it's, mm, it's Satan. the devil, <laughs> or oh, a, a plate fell because maybe the, the hook on the wall or whatever, yeah. it just gave away, or somebody somebody bumped the cat, my cat goes around and knocks things off at night, yeah. you know, and sometimes we'll hear something and I'll go, my mind will go, intruder, you know, and it turns out the cat went up and yeah. knocked something over, as cats do. Um, I also, I experienced a bit of this myself when I was watching... Um, a documentary, in-depth documentary on the Golden State Killer in California who went around and was peeping in windows and that's how he would target people. And we've got a lot of windows in our house. And so I was going around going, we've got to put curtains up on these windows just because, and my husband goes, why are you so paranoid? And it went directly because you need to stop listening to that crap. Yeah. It went right to what I was exposing myself to. And, you know, I just said, okay, enough, enough mm -hmm. of the documentary I yeah. mean, it was interesting i needed to learn some of these details but but we do start to misperceive things so i think this was another example of emotional thinking reinforced by the group yeah and they were convincing each other just sort of like a bunch of little kids sitting around the campfire and telling ghost stories and sure. then everybody gets scared where the account would be we saw this happen this this happened or even i saw this happen even if he did not Yes. Because the group is suggesting it and Satan is the big thing exactly. and there's doing exorcisms and this or that, that it's easy for the mind then to take that up and go, oh, yeah, that did happen. 100 percent. I mean, and to start misperceiving things, and, literally, yeah. you know, hearing something and believing that it, you know, it, it was happened. that and people reinforce it. So it's it's a powerful thing. It's a group dynamic thing. And 70% of the country, I looked this data up, b believes in a literal devil. I'm not in that category uh -huh. anymore. I did yeah. when I was a kid. I sure. got rid of all that. But um, people can easily be influenced, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my dog was just throwing up earlier. I think he might've been possessed. Um, so I got the crucifix exactly. out. We did a little exorcism. Exactly. I didn't just like, oh, hey, you want to go outside, buddy? Have some water? No. Exorcism. Exactly. He stopped throwing up. It must exactly. have been the devil. It must have been that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.